In the Lenten series, actually, I was making sure John still wasn't up there. Um, the Lenten series, we're actually going to begin it today. Um, we're going to look at the final words of Jesus over the course of the next few Sundays. It's, it's been pointed out that when someone is dying and they know that they're dying, the words that they decide to say are very important. And they communicate a lot about the things that are dear to them. And, and, and the things that they care about and, and the things that they're thinking about. As I considered that, I was thinking about when Denise's, Denise's father passed away. It was six years ago. And Denise, his da her dad had been down visiting and he wasn't doing well. And he hadn't been doing well for a while. And he went home. He was feeling sick. And, and he went into the hospital. And he was never going to come back out. And so Denise found out that he was sick, and she went up. And then when she found out just how serious it was, I flew up with Madison. And we got up there, and I remember uh, driving out to the hospital. And the rest of the family was already there, and it was me and Madison. We get out there, and we come, we come into the hospital. I wasn't sure what to expect. wasn't sure I even wanted to bring Madison in, but she loved her pop. And, and so we wanted to give her this opportunity to, to just say goodbye one last time. And we went in, and he, he looked at her, and he looked at all of us, and he began to cry. And he said, I am, I'm sorry. Uh, we've made jokes about what he meant when he said that. Um, some of those jokes are at the expense of my mother-in-law, uh, to be honest with you. But, but we have made jokes, but, but to be honest with you, we know exactly what he meant. What he meant was, I care about you, and I love you so much, and I feel like it's my responsibility to take care of you. And I feel like I'm leaving you, and, and not fulfilling what I'm supposed to be doing. And so we told him, you know, it's okay, we knew that he loved us. And, but it was a difficult thing. So as we begin this, this sermon series, we look at the final words that Jesus spoke. And we're going to jump from gospel to gospel and look at these. But we have to understand that these words are, are words that he chose to speak from the cross. And I don't want to go into all the details about the difficulty of, of actually speaking while hanging on the cross. You can read more about that if you want. Uh, it was very difficult. Right? Because you died from asphyxiation. So in order to raise yourself up, in order to breathe, it, you know, you had all these, all these sort of things going on. So the first words we're looking at are, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. I started thinking about these words and, and I've been reading some books and, and one of the books I know that uh, there's one of our Sunday school classes. You're doing it in Sunday school class, the book? Okay. One of our Sunday school classes, they're, they're reading one of the books that I'm using in order to, to sort of work this, through all of this. But, but as I was studying, I began to question, this question popped in my mind. What is forgiveness? We talk all the time about forgiveness, but I'm willing to bet that if we did a poll here and we asked what forgiveness was, we'd probably end up with roughly 90 different different opinions on exactly what forgiveness was. Um, Friday I had Bible study with a, a group of women from the church and I asked the question, what is forgiveness? And we had five different answers and there was five different people there. And it went from everything from this idea of you need to just sort of let everything go to um, this idea of, of wanting what's best for them and, and and so you have this whole, this whole range. Now forgiveness is one of those topics that runs throughout Scripture. It's, it's Old Testament, it's New Testament, there's New Testament references to Old Testament, um, and, and all the different authors are talking about this idea of forgiveness. In fact, there's so much talk about forgiveness, I want to dedicate an entire sermon series to the idea of forgiveness. We're going to look at that later in the year. But this morning, I want to get this thought in our heads. Forgiveness 
is this. Forgiveness is this idea that um, we realize that there are consequences for our actions. There are consequences for the things that we say and the things that we do. Forgiveness is this, is this place where you can get to in your own heart where you say, I understand that you're go there are going to be consequences for the things that you do, but I'm not going to be the one to exact it. Does that make any sense? In other words, I know that if you do something in this world, there is, it's very possible there will be consequences for it. There may, depending on the severity of it, there may be jail time. There's going to be hurt feelings. But if I forgive you, it means that I'm not going to be the one that tries to exact that pound of flesh from you. I let go of anything that I may be able to hold against you. Okay, so in other words, I'm not going to be the one to seek what we call justice. The other thing that, that goes along with forgiveness is not only am I, gonna, am I willing to sort of let go what you owe me, but I'm also going to hope that you get what's best for you. Not what you deserve, necessarily, but what's best for you. Is everybody following me, picking up what I'm laying down so far? Okay, this doesn't mean that this is not this, this, this wishy-washy, oh, everything's okay, and, and sure, you can, you can, you know, walk all over me, it's okay, I forgive you. It's not that. There's this passage of scripture in Proverbs, actually, that's addressed that, and I think we've talked about it before. I know we have in, in, in Sunday school, but it's this idea in Proverbs that talks about, as a dog returns to its own vomit, so a fool to his folly. And so there are times when we can forgive, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we put ourselves back in harm's way. But it does mean that I'm not... Uh, and, and hear me on this too. I can't say that I forgive you and then follow it up with this idea because I understand that someday you're going to have to answer to God. That's not forgiveness either. I've heard people say that before. It's like, I've forgiven them because one day they're going to have to answer to God. No, forgiving them would mean you hope that one day they don't. And so here's Jesus, he's hanging on the cross, and the first thing that Luke records him saying is, Father, forgive them because they don't have any idea what they're doing. And so we read that and we wonder, okay, who's he talking about? Well, the first thought is, he's, he's obviously talking about the soldiers that are nailing him to the cross. Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. Even though they're putting me through all of this agony and torture, forgive them. He's He's talking about the Jewish religious leaders that have worked to this point to, to they've, they've schemed against him out of, out of jealousy and this, this growing hatred in them towards him. They've schemed and they've connived. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. To the people in the crowd who are spitting at him and, and jeering and throwing insults his way, for God, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. But there's this theological understanding that's just been accepted by the church and, and it's actually intended by the authors. This idea that, that this forgiveness is also being extended to you and to me. And it's for everyone. Everyone. In fact, I, I, I one time was talking about the, the, the um, crucifixion and I pointed out that they make a sign above him and, and it reads in Latin and in Greek and in Aramaic. And those are the three main languages of the day. In fact, one represents the, the sort of the, the cultural, the Greek. One of them represents the, 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 um, just the local vernacular, which is the Aramaic. And then you've got the, the government, which is the Latin. And you see that what's happening here is for all people, all languages. And so this, this forgiveness is for each and every one of us. But the problem is, too often we read the scriptures, and we read stories about this, and we begin to think that it's actually about us. 
we read the scriptures and we think that somehow the story is about us. And, and, and what does this mean to me? What does this mean about me? And, and we've done this to this particular story too. We've taken it and we said, okay, this must be about me. And so the forgiveness is for me, which means I'm a bad person. And, and so we, we begin to look at and focus on how bad and how wrong humanity is. But, we, but this is actually the point. The story's not about you. The story's about God. And the story is about how wonderfully merciful God is and how much He loves us and how much He's willing to do for us. How He's willing to let it go. Not seek what we owe Him. And to hope for nothing but the best for people. You see, the fact of the matter is this. Before you and I were ever born, God knew everything we would do. And he had already forgiven it. Before the people standing there at the cross, before the people that nailed Jesus to the cross, before they were born, before they even did this, this heinous act, there's nothing, there's nothing in this world worse than crucifying God. Okay, so, so if you hear nothing else this morning, he forgave them. If he forgave the people that nailed him to the cross, how much more willing is he to, to forgive you? In fact, he already forgave them. He already forgave you. It's not a matter of he's willing to forgive you. The matter is that he already has. And what he wants is for now you to simply accept this gift. Does that make sense? It's not that God is waiting to forgive you. God already has. In the Old Testament, uh, in, in the book that you guys are reading in Sunday school class, Adam Hamilton talks about this. I want to share it this morning. He talks about the, the relationship between the, the Old Testament story of, of the scapegoat and, and what's going on here with Jesus. Now, in the Old Testament, what, what Moses teaches the people to do is, is you come once a year and you bring two goats. And then you cast lots and one of the goats is slaughtered on the altar. And the other goat has all of the sins poured out that represent all of the sins of Israel poured out on the goat. And then the goat is released to wander into the wilderness. And, and so you have this idea, this imagery of, of this, this goat carrying away all of the sins. Now, we don't actually believe that somehow this goat was able to take all of these sins and, and just walk away with them. But there's a symbolism that's taking place here. There's, a, there's, there's something being communicated. There's a, there's a deeper spiritual truth that goes beyond two goats. And that truth is this, that, that sin is destructive. Missing the point and trying to be God's ourself is a destructive thing. But God loves us so much that he's willing to take that away. He's willing to forgive it. In fact, he already has. And so in this, you see that it's destructive, but you also see the deep love that he has. And so the same thing happens with us, but in a permanent way. Jesus is the word of God, and the word of God is speaking. And the word of God is saying this, you are forgiven. Now, Jesus could have prayed this to himself, right? But he says it out loud. Why? So you can hear him. So on the cross, we begin to understand a real need for forgiveness. A real need to accept it. And then when we accept it, we need to share it. But this is, a, this is a, a, a circular thing here that happens. Because only if you acknowledge that you need it will you actually receive it. Right? Because then that's when you want it and so you take it. But once you've taken it and you've acknowledged that you need it, then you need to give it. Yeah, are you following me? If you're following me, at least nod. Say, yeah, we're picking up what you're laying down here. Okay? I will not take something if I do not think I need it. 
And so on the cross, in Jesus' words, we see that, yes, we need to be forgiven. But we also see that it's already been done. And so all we have to do is accept it. But once we have, we got to share it. And I would go on with this, with this circle of forgiveness and say this. If you're not willing to give it, you never probably actually acknowledge your own need to receive it. Which means you probably have never actually taken it. What? Okay, there's a passage of scripture. I was going to save this one, but I, I, it, needs, it needs to be shared. There's this passage of scripture... Okay, in Matthew, when Matthew has Jesus teaching us how to pray, and at the end of that prayer, he says this. He says, um, if you forgive, then you will be forgiven. If you don't forgive, then you won't be forgiven. And that's a paraphrase, but basically that's what he's saying. So in other words, as you forgive, God will forgive you. And as you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. But now wait a second, Jeff. This makes it sound like God actually hasn't forgiven us yet and he's waiting to forgive us. But you just told us that actually the forgiveness has already happened. Yes, the forgiveness has already happened. What this is saying is the more you forgive, the more ready your heart is ready to receive forgiveness. You won't be ready to receive that forgiveness that's already been given to you if you yourself are not willing to forgive. Now, if you leave this morning and you're thoroughly confused, that's okay. Because maybe you'll think more about it. But hear this this morning. This is the invitation. To accept the gift of forgiveness that God has already given you. To live in it and to enjoy it and to share it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, hymn of dedication, is Love Lifted Me. The words are on the screen. Stand as you are able.